you guys thank you so much for tuning in to mom with me here i have no <laughs> he was just crying because he just doesn't want to leave mom <laughs> you're so silly hi. yes say hi go like this look say hi everybody hi Tira besito. so he's gonna be with me today while i see while i see while i film while I film my breastfeeding journey. Um, this video is going to be a little bit long, so grab a snack, grab a friend, grab a baby, <laughs> whatever you'd like to grab. And if you're interested in, thank you. <laughs> if you're interested oh, wow. in learning more about what I've gone through, what I went through um, up until this ah. point, I am still breastfeeding. I'm 15 months postpartum. So if you're interested in knowing just how it went for me, how has it been, and and what it is that I'm doing now, then keep on watching. Go like this. Do it. So because I have so much that I want to talk about, I'm going to be looking down at my notes again. My planner. I live and breathe through this planner. Um, so you will see me looking down a lot. And yeah, that's about it. So let's get started. I'm pretty much going to start... Um, oh, actually, I did want to mention, I know that in a lot of videos, either I, not a lot of videos, but in most of my videos, either I don't look straight directly at the camera, I talk a lot with my hands, I say, I'm a lot, I'm sorry, I'm working on it, bear with me, yes, there's water wipes back there, this is mom life, <laughs> okay, so anyway, I will get better, I promise, I'm so sorry if it bothers you or whatever, but my sister gets on me all the time about it, but I'm just like, this is how I talk. Like, I've always talked like this. I've always talked with my hands. It's just me. And the um stuff, like, I don't know when that's going away, but anyway. So, I'm going to pretty much start with before the baby. While I was pregnant, um, I made sure I educated myself a lot. I don't even remember what, um what I, I think it was just one day my mom was like are you gonna breastfeed and I was like yeah of course and then I was just stuck because I was like uh what and and then from there I was like okay so this is something that I want to do like let me do my research because I don't know nothing about breastfeeding. I needed to make sure that I knew what I was getting myself into as far as you know like how does it work like is there anything special I need to know, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm very big on researching everything. And that's what I set my mind to was trying to find classes that I can take, doing my research online, YouTubing, whatever it was that I needed to, to do to know what I was getting myself into. So basically I started off with some classes. Um, Babies R Us offers free classes. They do like a baby basics class. They do like um what to expect at the hospital i think or like what to pack in your bag um so then they also do the breastfeeding 101 all these classes are free you just go online to babiesrus.com or contact your local babies or us and they can tell you or they can give you a schedule a calendar of all the classes they're going to have for that month they do offer cpr classes they do like my baby's first birthday my baby's first halloween first easter it's super cool i love all the activities activities that they have um so i just think it's something you should look into because i think it's so beneficial i think i want to say about maybe 60 or 70 percent of the information that i know now was thanks to that class that i took um the lady that did the class she's a certified lactation consultant she works at a hospital she used to be a mother baby nurse so it was really good getting this information from a trained professional um and I learned so much in that class that I did not even know before. So I took that one and I also took Baby Basics. And I think she taught, yep, she taught both of them. Because that's how I found out about the breastfeeding one. I went to the Baby Basics class. Oh, excuse me. And she, ta she told us that she does a breastfeeding um, class as well. So then I ended up going to the breastfeeding one. Anyway, so I made sure I was very much prepared. Um, I also watched a lot of YouTube videos on just like breastfeeding must-haves and things like that which i will be doing a video on that as well so stay tuned is a part of this like three day kind of series um i'm going to be filming this one first and then my next one will be my breastfeeding must-haves and then the one after that will be like a breastfeeding q a 
Um, so any questions that you guys have that I did not cover in this video, make sure you leave it down below in the comments. I know I'm all over the place, but I knew this video was going to be like this. I tried to write down things, you know, as I wanted to talk about them, but it never goes that way. So anyway, um, I just made sure I was prepared. And in the beginning, I had the biggest goal, which to me was the biggest goal. It was I want to hit a year. And that's how long I want to breastfeed for. You know, some moms say three months, six months, and that's fine. You can have all the goals that you want. Or whatever goal that you want my goal personally was to hit the year mark also I do want to put a disclaimer I don't know if I already said this before but ultimately to me I'm very pro uh, fed is best whether you formula feed or breastfeed and ultimately if it came down to it and I had to formula feed him I would do it in a heartbeat his life is more important to me than anything else um, but I was just dead set on this is what I want to do and that's it you know formula to me and my mind didn't exist and it's nothing wrong with it I just this is what I wanted to do. And when I say I want to do something and I want to stick to it, I do it. So that's just me and nothing against any mom that formula fed or that tried to breastfeed in the beginning and thought for one reason or another that they couldn't um, or had a condition because I know that there's some times where either you're put in a position where you can't breastfeed at all, even if it's pumping, either you took medications that you cannot breastfeed on or or like I said you have a condition or whatever the case may be but yeah this is just my journey and and what I went Next. through the hospital when I was in the hospital I made sure that I did a birth plan in my birth plan I specified no um no bottle feeding no formula unless the baby's life is at risk if the baby's um sugar drops or i guess if his sugar levels weren't um where they should have been i wanted to try breastfeeding three times before formula was given because i'm allowed to try that three times and then again like i said if his life is at risk and that's a different story but that's what i wanted to try to do um so i put that on there i also put like delayed cord clamping which you have a c-section so at least in my hospital at least my doctor they can only do it for a few seconds um because it's a c-section they had to get the process going i mean you know um so i think they did it for a few seconds for him no pacifiers um that went out the window i'll tell you about it later <laughs> but you you do a lot of stuff that you say that you're not going to do because before your parent i mean you don't know what it's like you don't know what kind of stuff you're going to run into and i i do a lot of stuff that i said i was not going to do before I became a mom so anyway that's neither here nor there but <laughs> that is one of the things I put on there on no pacifier they do recommend for you not to give a pacifier I want to say is within the first six to eight weeks for nipple confusion not every baby goes through nipple confusion no it didn't um, every baby is different but they recommend against it because of that because of nipple confusion um, Noah never had a problem when I was in the hospital um, I did, I had a scheduled C-section. They put him on me for skin to skin when I went into recovery. They latched him right away. He was a great, like he latched on immediately. Um, I had no problems with that. He was getting milk as he should. And I was already prepared mentally for the fact that he was going to be attached to my boob 24 7 because i read that i read about cluster feeding i read about growth spurts i read about leaps i downloaded the wonder weeks app which is one of the best apps that i've ever downloaded and paid for it was like 1.99 but it's the best 1.99 i've ever spent i i recommend for you to get that app because it also tells you a lot about what they're going through developmentally and it helps you understand why they're crying why they're eating a lot why are they not sleeping all of a sudden you know why are they so clingy also i recommend breeding into the fourth trimester that helped me so 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 much because it's so true life for them outside of the womb is something completely different than when they were in the womb warm in the dark just listening to mom's heartbeat you know so that's why they want us all the time because they're out in this cold world with all these noises and all these different um simulations to their senses all these smells all these you know touch and just everything and and of course that it freaks them out because they're not used to this and it breaks my heart when i don't want to cry but it really breaks my heart when there's 
moms that just like no i need a break or i know everybody needs a break but it's just like those that first i want to say noah's first three months of life were so crucial for me because i needed to help him get adjusted to this new world you know and I don't want to judge any mom, but to me personally, I would never do that. I would never just, and I used to get shit for it all the time. I used to get, oh, put him down. He'll be fine. Or, oh, you got to let him cry a little bit. No, I don't need to leave, let him cry. Um, why? I'm sitting here. I can grab him. Like, and letting them cry it out is not good either. There's tons of studies out there that prove that that does not work. It actually does more harm than good, but that's a whole nother story I don't want to get into, but that's just me. That's my morals my beliefs. i just learned so much and they cluster feed a lot in the beginning and so a lot of moms not a lot of moms but um most moms think that they're not producing enough so that's why they stop breastfeeding because they feel like the baby's so hungry and you know a lot of it is comfort but it's also that's how they get through those uh leaps and uh growth spurts is cluster feeding so anyway i was already prepared for that um my nipples were so so sore i will go into what i use in my um, breastfeeding must-haves um and i went through really tough times i mean i had to go to wick at one point to get help from the lactation consultant because noah was lashing good but i felt like just me being paranoid i had weight a weight a weight weighted weight feed whatever they feed him or i feed him and then they weigh him to see how much he's taking in um but let me backtrack i think i skipped i was skipping over too much i in the hospital i did end up giving him the pacifier because i don't even remember why i just gave it to him but i gave him one that i brought um he was using the man pacifiers i think those are great pacifiers um, I never had an issue with that one. Although he took to pretty much any pacifier, to be honest with you. He never had a problem, but I just, because they're orthodontic pacifiers and they're just breast-like or whatever the case may be, I gave it to him. I like ma'am, the brand ma'am, period. So he did take those pacifiers in the hospital. He never had to take a bottle. He never had, to, I never had to pump. I had them latched on all the time, 24-7. You know, I made sure I wrote everything down. The app that I used was the Medela, Medela. The brand of my pump that was the best app i still use it now it's the best breastfeeding app for me i've downloaded a ton and that's the one that i always run back to so anyway that's what i used i went to i had a lot of friends that i would harass <laughs> like my friend ivany my friend yudina um jasmine i had so many friends that i would consult to and bother 24 7 because i know that they breastfed so they were such a big help for me too and I really couldn't have done it without them either along with the Facebook group um, breast bottle and beyond that was like a number one for me I love that Facebook group I still use it till today those women are awesome the creators are amazing the admins are amazing everybody that helps on that group is amazing and all the ladies in general are just wonderful so I would definitely recommend um, adding yourself to that group they also have an OT group which is off-topic group so you can ask other questions other than um, breast or bottle feed. I ended up going to wake because I wanted to do the weight feeding and also because I wanted to make sure his latch was good his latch did look good to me but I wanted to make sure that it was good so she tweaked it a little bit um I think what I was doing was putting my boob to him and not him to my boob I think I don't remember but she just tweaked it a little bit um because I told her that I was still in a lot of pain I think at that point he was like two and a half months or something like that or maybe two months and I was like, should I still be feeling pain? You know, but she helps me. It made a little bit of a difference. But honestly, I think I felt the best after the three months. The first three months are literally the hardest. I wanted to freaking quit all the time. I would sit in the shower crying because I was in so much pain. And just what helped me in the beginning was setting small goals. Like I know I said that I set a big one in the beginning before I even had him. But when I had him what really helps me and motivated me was setting small goals so i would start at you know just one month goal two months after two months i was like okay i want to do four months after four months it was six months and after six months i was like okay i could do this for a year and then did i think i was going to still be breastfeeding no but i am <laughs> but anyways that's what helped me in the beginning was really setting small goals that were realistic for me like even if i was saying 
you know, I'm going to do it one more week or another week. You know, it was just getting my mind to get through that week to go to the next one and living day by day because I couldn't even bear to think doing this for a year and I was in so much pain. And I think that's a lot of what they don't prepare you for is all the pain that you experience with it. Thankfully, I never had bleeding, cracked nipples um, because he latched on perfectly, but I did have really sore nipples. So, I mean, but that's normal. You're not used to somebody sucking on your boob 24-7. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> They're not killing each other. Bro. So, small goals. When I breastfed at home, um, I had to give him a bottle and, and me like a dummy, I gave it to him. Um, it was, I think the first week, the doctor that he was with, which I changed after that, but wanted to see how much he was drinking. So I gave him like one ounce in a bottle and he drank it. He took it fine. It was a Tommy Sippy bottle, but I didn't like the Tommy Sippy bottles because you can't really breastfeed. I mean, I'm not breastfeed. Pace feed, I didn't like the way I pace fed him with it. And it was just that one time that I gave him the bottle and then after that, I didn't. Um, I really didn't give him the bottle until after two months, I think, when he stayed with my mom. Um, I started doing, like, Dr. Brown's bottles. And he took them just fine. Um, I used to use regular pillows or just hold them or lay while I was laying down. Um, I, I had a breast, my breast friend pillow that I took with me to the hospital. I used it a few times. I did use it a few times at home, but I did not use it as much as I thought that I would. Because I also, um, I had a rocking chair and I think that's what helped me a lot. I would sit in the rocking chair and feed him. Or like I said, I would just, I had to lay back nurse him because um, I had an overflow. Not an overflow. It was a fast flow. I don't remember what it's called. It's just when you, when your milk comes out really fast. And they kind of like choke and, you know, and they kind of like, <laughs> when they first taking the milk in. So that's. I had to lay back nurse and that was the way that he was able to drink so I would nurse him like that anyway I would just make sure I have one pillow here one pillow here so my arms were propped up and he wasn't gonna go anywhere because in the beginning breastfeeding makes you so sleepy it's scary engorgement that's the next topic um so when I came home from the hospital um, I think that same night was when I started to produce my mature milk um, because in the hospital in those first few days, I just had colostrum. So that night when I got home, um, it was probably four, four days after I gave birth, um, was when my milk started coming in. So the next day, like my boobs were super big. They were red. I was in so much pain and I was told so much, don't pump, don't pump, don't pump, you know, because you don't want to cause an oversupply. I mean, it's good to have an oversupply, but then you get plug ducts, you get mastitis, you get all this crazy stuff. So it's just like, this is where I say, like, you do a lot of things that you say you're not going to do. So I said I wasn't going to pump, but I had to. I would pump literally just for like a minute or two just to relieve a little bit of it. Um, Because I also didn't know how to freaking hand express properly. So I didn't want to just waste my milk. Um, So I was pumping just like one or two minutes in the beginning before a feed just to relieve some of the pain and then I was fine I mean I think I got over it you know but that was engorgement it wasn't really too much I figured out how to work around it and then that was it I think at one point I did have an oversupply because I would pump in the mornings and then maybe like in the middle of the day and then maybe at night so I did have an oversupply for a little bit but when I noticed that I started to get so many plug ducts um I stopped pumping altogether. I was a stay-at-home mom for like almost seven months, so it was very easy for me to just breastfeed anyway. It was so hard for me to find time to pump because I was by myself too, so it really didn't work out for me, so I just stopped pumping. When I would get those like plug ducts and mastitis, oh my God, I wanted to quit every freaking time. I would cry so bad in the shower, um, but I used to get it down to a science, and I will put in my must-haves um things that helped relieve all of that too uh things that i use and um but i got mastitis once thankfully it did not get ex like intense like it usually does because i went to the hospital as soon as i felt the chills because i don't think i really had a fever and i saw like a red spot on my boob so i was like something's not right so i went to the er that night and they gave me antibiotics that were safe to take while breastfeeding 
and um, I got better right away and then after that it was just the plug dogs like that was just that literally I said to Fernando I remember saying to him I'm gonna try because because I need to try everything that I can because if I do quit because that's how I saw it as was quitting if I do quit I want to know that I tried everything that I could before I just give up and and they always say never to quit on a bad day um, the days that I would be in so much pain I would feel so bad after and I would cry even more because I would say to myself you know you're being selfish like yeah you're going through so much pain but you're going to stop giving your child the best milk he can possibly have because you're in a little bit of pain like this is not going to last forever you know like it was hard and i would i would just me battling myself you know i would tell myself that that's that's the kind of conversations i would have with myself like you know like you could do this like and I always saw it as if I quit was me being selfish. Nobody else, I'm not saying nobody else is like this. This is just me. This is how I felt for myself. I didn't want to be selfish. And that's why I pushed through. And no matter what the heck I went through, no matter how much pain I was in, I dealt with it because I was like, moms tell me that it's just the first few months that are hard and after this it gets better. And I'm like, I'm going to hit that hill where it's going to be smooth sailing and I'm going to be so proud of myself and this is what I'm going to do and this is what I want to do and Fernando all the time was telling me babe you did so much already like it's okay that if you don't want to do anymore and whatever you know you're not a failure you you did it you know whatever and to me I saw myself as a failure like no matter if I fed him for a month or two months or three months like to me it was a failure if I just quit on him so I just really like with the plug dog situation I literally tried everything that I possibly could to make sure that you know that I continued and I got over it thank God and when I went back to work was about six and a half no it was about six and a half months I had no plans I went back to work I was going to be a stay-at-home mom for the first year but a job opportunity popped up and I took it um that's when Noah had to start taking bottles again. And I remember trying to, I remember maybe like a month before that, trying to get him on a bottle. Um, because he would, he probably took three bottles or four prior to that. Um, and he refused it. He would not take any bottles at all from anybody, from me, from Fernando, from nobody. And I tried six different bottles none of them work and of course i tried the most expensive bottle or one of the most expensive bottles it's the mimby brand and he took to that bottle thankfully but before we even got to that point he would go like when he would stay with fernando he would go five hours without eating he would refuse a bottle until he finally would give up and be like okay i'm gonna eat but even at the sitter too when he first started going to the sitter he was the same thing refuse it for hours and i think like the first two weeks was hard but then he started getting his swing of things and you know he adjusted um just fine so and i had no problem with him going but from boob to breast i like the mimby because it's not like a round nipple the nipples kind of angles like just look it up it's i can't even explain it but the way that the nipple is shaped is what i really liked about it um, and I did get him on the slowest flow nipple. That is something very important that if you're going to go between breast and the bottle, you want to make sure that you're getting a bottle that has the slowest flow nipple to mimic breastfeeding and also to look up pace feeding on YouTube for anybody that's going to stay with the baby so that it mimics breastfeeding. What you don't want is for them to, um, have like a fast flow nipple because that's not how it is with the boob. So they're going to refuse the boob if with the bottle they're getting the milk much faster quicker and effortlessly you know and that's also how you can cause overfeeding so Noah still to this day he's 15 months and he if he does have a bottle it's a five ounce bottle sometimes he only drinks four ounces and I know kids his age that are drinking like eight ounce bottles and to me that's like blows my mind but you know to each his own that's just how I learned how to do things um and that's how that's how much milk came. going back to work was so hard for me but i made sure that i pumped i work at a job where it's 
they're very flexible with me breastfeed or pumping i thank the lord for that every day i think that's another reason why i've been able to still breastfeed so long i probably do five sessions in a day i pump every two hours for 30 minutes each session um and before i used to get a lot of milk and then it started going before i used to get enough for his four bottles um I used to make 16 ounces exactly then it started going down to 12 ounces um and i think that was after i i after the first month of me going back to work and then when i started not i i had my period when i was four months was when i got my first period four months postpartum but when i started going back to work and i got my period um my supply would dip drastically and then just with a lot of stress with the whole stress of me going back to work like that made my supply dip so much um nothing that i took worked like the teas didn't work the teas were actually working against me they were dropping my supply the lactation cookies that i bought from target were killing my supply um i tried coconut milk i tried ovaltine i tried gatorade i tried the starbucks drink everything i've tried everything and i think honestly what worked for me or even what helps me like even get you know past those rough days was my haka pump that i would use while he's nursing to get extra milk when i was super low pumping in the middle of the night pumping at or out all hours of the night just to get any drops that i could to complete his bottles um drinking a lot of water making sure that i wasn't taking all the calories that i needed that's really what helped me and trying to stay relaxed and stress-free um because i think that's what was hurting my supply a lot too and none of that other stuff was helping none of those supplements were helping me but i mean some moms swear by it and like more power to them i wish i was one of those moms but i can't even tell you that none of that stuff worked for me um and a lot of what has helped me last so long is giving my myself words of affirmation if you have to put little post-it notes on your mirror or whatever just to keep you going you also need a good support system i want to say fernando was so good in like giving me pep talks and like telling me how good and how proud he was that I stuck it out for so long you know and that's what I needed I think the reason why I've been so successful was one because the amount of research that I've done two is because I've had the best support and I had so such good friends that were there guiding me throughout the way and that they never said no to me when I needed a question answer or when I needed help um and then those Facebook groups I think that is what has helped me be so successful and also just like I said giving myself words of affirmation being positive with myself kind of patting myself on the back you know and telling myself this is not gonna last forever you know it's gonna get better and that's what I have to keep telling myself was that it's not gonna last forever the pain is not gonna last forever it's gonna get better you know and I just think that's what helped me get through it um I did start him on solids at six months. He didn't want nothing to do with it. He is just a boo baby. So because I say food before one is just fun, I didn't push food on him. I would try, you know, everything. I tried homemade. I tried jar food. I tried the little plastic containers. Like, I've tried everything with him. Real food, baby led weaning, everything. And it's just now that he's... I want to say when he was maybe like 13, 14 months that he started becoming a little bit better of an eater. But he's a milk baby. Like, he loves his milk. So I really didn't push any of that on him before one, you know? Um, and now, technically, I guess, here in the States, after one, it's called extended breastfeeding. So I am extended breastfeeding still. Um, I have a trip coming up to New York in the next week and i'm thinking about weaning him after that trip but uh i don't know yet because <laughs> it's just hard man i mean his i think his main thing is going to be the nighttime feedings um not so much the day during the day he's fine but i think those nighttime feedings are going to be hard for me to cut but that's a whole other video as soon as i can get him weaned off i will make a video i had a lot of bumps in the road for sure but, you know, 
I just pushed through all of them. And anytime I had a question, I went and asked that group and they helped me so much. I mean, I really can't even tell you. And as far as breastfeeding in public, I will breastfeed him anywhere in front of whoever, wherever, at whatever time. I do not care. I never wore a cover. I usually would do the two shirt method, which is just like if I have this shirt on top and I would have a tank top. Oh, I have a tank top um, underneath. And then I would just pull the shirt up. So I had the tank top covering my body. And then the top part of this shirt was covering the top part of my boob. And then he obviously was covering my boob. So I would do the two shirt method. Or if, like, let's say this was a v-neck, I would pull my boob out from the top part. And I would clip a bib here. So the bib was like, it would hang on top of the top part of my boob. He didn't like being covered anyway. He got super hot. I was never ashamed to do it in public because, like I said... I, thankfully, I've never had a problem. I've never had nobody give me any dirty stairs. So I've, I've been blessed in that aspect where I really didn't have to cover anything up or feel any type of way about, you know, and Fernando never cared that I breastfed in public. So I never had an issue with that. That's it. That's my journey. If, if I miss something, I will include it in my other videos. I really don't want to make this video so long and that's why I probably cut out a lot of what i shouldn't have but if you feel like you have a question i am going to do a breastfeeding q a please leave it down in the comments below i'll be more than happy to answer it in that q a that i'm doing it's going to be the last video so you have time on this video and my next video to post in the comment section any questions that you have or something that i did not cover um if i didn't cover something it is because i have a question for it that i need to answer on the breastfeeding q a so like i said just feel free to put it down in the comment section below like share subscribe thank you so much for watching i appreciate every one of you and for showing love and for sharing my videos like you ladies are amazing that's it for this video and i will see you on my next one bye